Again, thanks to the Yukon administration for allowing this event to go forward. I only wish that their safety protocols extended to allowing members of the general public to show up. I know I got dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds of emails from people in the general area who were hoping to get in, were unable to do so. I had heard that by the time of this event, there were another five or 600 people who wanted to come at minimum, uh, and it's unfortunate that the heckler's veto still seems to prevail. Anita Hill spoke here, I guess, in the last couple of weeks, and it was totally open to the public. Something has to be done about a system where a few crazed leftists decide they don't want to hear somebody speak, and therefore people from the outside who pay taxes to universities like this one can't get in. You know, that has to stop. This heckler's veto nonsense where if somebody on the left prevents speech, we all have to make sure that no one can get in from the outside. Uh, that really needs to end, particularly because free speech, I mean, this should be a shining moment for this university, not just because I'm so brilliant and I'm here, but also, <laughs> but also because it sh it's, it's a great thing that universities have people like me, and yes, like the person who's speaking opposite me on this campus to give a variation of ideas. That's a wonderful thing, and that's a, that's a, it should be a shining example for universities around the country. It's just too bad that they won't share that with people in the community who are paying for it. So Frank I'm always amazed a little bit by the amount of upset that my speeches cause. Apparently, I've heard that I'm a danger to the student body in some way, so much so that the university's associate vice president and chief diversity officer, the most useless title in all of academia, <laughs> sent, a, sent a letter suggesting that students who feel threatened by my presence should reach out to the cultural centers, the dean of students' office, or the university's office of counseling and mental health services. So they actually sent a letter that said, quote, we understand that even the thought of an individual coming to campus with the views that Mr. Shapiro expresses can be concerning and even hurtful. Wow. <laughs> and that's why we wanted to make you aware as soon as we were informed. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a missile being launched from North Korea. We just have to put the alert system on Twitter. I agree, by the way, if you are so upset by my very presence on this campus, First of all, my guess is you didn't show up. Second of all, if you're that upset that you actually have to go to mental health services, I would just suggest that you probably need to see mental health services about a fair number of other things in your life. <laughs> Speaking of which, of course, the College Democrats are uh, holding an event simultaneously right now, which I'm sure has just the same number of people at it. Uh, this event, I guess, is uh, dedicated to just debunking me. So there's some guy who I'd never heard of until like the last five minutes uh, who apparently runs a website that no one had heard of until he wrote a piece about me. So I, I am excited that I am a one-man stimulus package for academia, that I'm creating an entire cottage industry of useless people who now have found a use, and it's just yelling about things that I say, so that's exciting. I have heard also that this person uh, is a socialist, so I hope that they're getting paid. I hope this guy's getting paid, and maybe he can be drawn into the great market that is the United States and maybe be cured of his foolishness. I do find it sort of amazing, by the way, that the left is so afraid of open conversation that they scheduled an event at the exact same time. And I think that they should totally have their event, and they should have their event yelling at me and all of that. That's great. Um, but I would prefer that they actually come to this event, and then they can ask questions, because when we have the Q&A session, I have one simple rule. If you disagree with me, you raise your hand and you go to the front of the line. I prefer speaking with people with whom I disagree, not only because it makes for great internet fodder, but also because discussions are useful. I've spent my entire life in places like Los Angeles and Boston, places that, where no one agrees with me, literally no one agrees with me, and I have fun conversing about these views. I think it makes me sharper, it makes the person I'm talking to sharper, so everybody will have their shot, right? If you're on the left and you disagree with the stuff I'm about to say, then you'll have your, your, you'll have your opportunity. I just wish the college Democrats had participated in that rather than simply walking out, taking their ball, and going home like small children. And this is an upgrade, by the way, from what Antifa usually does. So I'm glad they're having an event and not trying to disrupt this one. I have a feeling that has to do with a couple of things. One, there's actually security. And two, it's really cold outside, and as a member of my security team told me, they are fair weather protesters. Uh, <laughs> So apparently they, they wrote a letter to the student newspaper saying that uh, I am a, a racist and ensconced in white identity politics, which is uh, asinine. I've been one of the loudest critics of the alt-right in America uh, for at least the last couple of years. I was the number one target of the alt-right according to the Anti-Defamation League. I received almost 8,000 tweets in a six-month period that targeted me in anti-Semitic fashion, largely from the anti-Semitic alt-right. But apparently Antifa is upset particularly because I, quote, overlook the need for ethnic studies and diversity-related education in the United States. That's fair. I mean, they should be angry. If we did away with useless college classes, how could they get easy A's that allow them to have jobs in useless professions at universities like this one? <laughs> now, Nick, make no mistake, I'm not saying that people of diverse backgrounds and orientations and races shouldn't be on this campus. They absolutely should. Everybody who's qualified should be on this campus, obviously. What I am suggesting is that if you are judging the quality of a group of people by the color of their skin, this makes you the racist, not me. 
And if you're looking at a group of people and you say this group of people is better than that group of people simply by dint of the variation in melanin, then you're doing something wrong. There's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with me for suggesting there's something wrong with you if you are judging people simply by their group identity rather. <laughs>
That's because investment income has done really well under the stock market, for example. So if you had money to put in the stock market, that's been doing really well for you over the past several years, which suggests that one of the ways that you get out of poverty is to save and then get into the stock market. Right? The, the point here is that when people focus on income inequality, I think that this is a, actually a rather large moral mistake. I think that, that focusing on poverty is a good thing to do. I think focusing on income inequality is not a good thing to do because there's no correlation between income inequality and relative rates of poverty. Right? There's tremendous income inequality in a lot of places on planet Earth. In fact, in all places on planet Earth. If you go to Sudan, there's going to be a rich warlord there, and then there are going to be a bunch of people living on $6 a year. Okay, that, that's a terrible place to live. Income inequality in the United States is also quite high. Right? There are people who are Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, and then there's the, the, the local checker at your grocery store. But if the local checker at your grocery store is getting richer, then it seems to me they have nothing particularly to complain about in how the economy is operating.